Good morning, Wayfam from Berlin. I'm Ashley, this is my husband Josh. Welcome to our channel. We sold everything we had to travel the world and now we want to share with you the way away. So be sure to subscribe down below, hit the little bell and give us a like for more adventures. Let's go. So we have come to Berlin. Finally, in yesterday's video, you saw us arrive. It was a very long, slow day. Very long travel This day. morning, we took a bus from kind of the outside of the city. I think it's the west. <laughs> two Euro 80 for two hours with transfers. And uh, that's what we got. We're wearing all the clothes we could put underneath our clothes just to stay yeah. warm because um, we've been in warm weather for a long time. Ber uh, Berlin is cold. colder than it is in Barcelona. For so sure. we are going on a two and a half hour tour of Sandemans and it is going to be cold. <laughs> yeah. It's just the wind that's really It's cold. the wind because look, the right sun's now, out. You can bad. see the sun. You can get a shadow on my face if I hold the camera there. Yeah. But the wind, as soon as the wind moves, you're like, <sighs> it's biting. <laughs> we started with a little German breakfast. We went and found our own little place um, away from the touristic area. It was delicious. Josh got some potato soup that Which looked very German very with yeah. like little uh, hot dogs in it. <laughs> so we're good to go. Our bellies are full and I think our tour is about to begin. Steve, I am your tour guide this afternoon and I'm pretty sure you figured out in the very first second I am not German. I do not have a German accent. I am from Sydney, Australia. Okay, our tour has just started. Our tour guide is Australian. Um, he's been living here in Berlin and he seems really funny. Hey, he, he's excited. done a really good job of yeah. setting the whole thing up. <laughs> so far. So we're just walking like five feet. In, <laughs> into the sun. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> This probably isn't the first time you guys have seen us do a Sandemans tour. We like to do these free walking tours um, when we get to a city because it kind of gives us bearings about the city, gives us a little bit of history because we move so quickly. It's hard for us to do a lot of research before we arrive in these cities. So it's a great way. Plus it's a free walking tour. You do tip the guide, but it's a great way also, like if you're on a budget, to learn about a city and do something during your day that um, is not very expensive. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, you just get to see some really cool stuff that you probably wouldn't have exactly. otherwise. Exactly. We always um, appreciate a place so much more when we know kind of the background and know about it. It was originally built as a gate in and out of town in 1794. And in 1796, they put the big statue on top known as Podriga. Now, originally, she's meant to be Irina, goddess of peace, riding her chariot of peace, pulled by four horses of tranquility down into Berlin, a city famous for its peaceful history. But in 1806, a little French man with a big ego called Napoleon came and captured Berlin. Now, as Nappy rode his horse, he ganged on style through the Brandenburg Gate. He looked up and he saw a woman. Okay, we just left the Paris Square, aptly named because the statue on top of Brandenburg Gate was taken back from Paris and placed above that arc there, Brandenburg Gate. That whole area is pretty neat. It's basically the center of power and government for Berlin. So there's a French embassy, US embassy, there's even a UK embassy just around the corner. And just behind us, which you could probably not see, is the Reichstag, which is the German parliament. So that whole area is bureaucratic government and not a great place to find food. That's why Ashley and I walked down the street to get food this morning before the tour started. But we're headed off, I believe east now, and just along this road you can see a layer of bricks going through the center of the road. That marks the location of the Berlin Wall, where it used to be. <laughs> so further on we can actually see the wall later, but that's pretty neat to know that the bricks in the middle of the road here are where the wall was. Something I didn't know, I mean there's a lot I didn't know, but one of the things I found particularly interesting was after World War I, the Germans signed a surrender agreement unequivocally. After that, uh, almost a civil war of sorts ensued where people were vying for power. Uh, you had communism, uh, the Nazis, and other groups all trying to take power. And during that time, hyperinflation ensued. One US dollar at some point was worth about two trillion marks and from that they were able to recover and just a few years ago within this decade is when Germany stopped paying its debts on World War One. As you can see we're walking through a very interesting thing if you don't know what this is uh, it's a memorial to the Jewish people that were lost during World War II. There's different memorials around the city as well but this is probably the main one. It's about a block from Brandenburg Gate and as you can see there's lots of different cement blocks. 
you're not supposed to really be able to interpret exactly what it means, but to my eyes, it looks like a bunch of tombstones and a bit of a solitary place. A place that's kind of got uh, just a real stillness about it. I mean, as you're walking through, you can see your whole landscape is altered. And the deeper you go into it, the more you're confined. It's a very interesting feeling, but it's good to remember the past and what's happened so that we aren't doomed to repeat it. Just kitty quarter to the Holocaust Memorial is this space. It is a residential area built in the 1980s by the Soviets. And just underneath, right there by that playset, is where the bunker that Hitler spent his last days in used to exist. When they built this residential area, they had to blow it up three times because of course it was a bunker built by the Germans and they built this Soviet style residential area on top of it. That is what was at first the final resting place of Hitler when he killed himself. But there is no final resting place of Hitler because his body was eventually cremated and his ashes spread in a river to just be gone forever. We're headed now to the seat of power of Angela Merkel and we're gonna learn a bit more about the more modern history of Germany. That is the North Korean Embassy of Germany. If you're a North Korean citizen who's lost your passport, they are here to help you get home. Now this is about the only time you'll ever see a North Korean Embassy. I know there's one here, there's one in London, one in New Delhi, I believe there's one in Beijing as well. And if you ever want to visit North Korea, you can now go jump through the gates and jump back really quickly. And about a month ago, my hand went to North Korea. Hey guys, we're standing in front of this jolly, cheerful, intimate little building here. This is a genuine Nazi-era building. This is what the Nazis wanted the entire world to look like. Friendly, on a human scale, very cozy and intimate. Um, now, it was built in 1936 to be the headquarters of the Luftwaffe, the German Air Force. So this is the domain of Hermann Goering. So amazingly enough, it transformed from being a Nazi building to a communist building, which is amazing because they're the opposite, apparently. But um, yeah, this became the East German Ministry of Ministries. It was the headquarters of East Germany. It was even the building East Germany was founded in. Uh, now these days, it is still a German government building, but nowadays it is the headquarters of the German tax department. Germany loves taxation. 10% of all the world's tax laws are German tax laws. So they had to choose the biggest building in town to hold them all. So count it down. It was the headquarters of the Luftwaffe. It was the headquarters of East Germany. Now it is the tax department. Some buildings are destined for evil things. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Another fun anecdote, this building, while the largest in all of Berlin, was hit only once during the bombings of Berlin in World War II. Somehow it managed to survive pretty much intact. I think it's interesting what they said, like a uh, bomb in World War I, what was it? World War II. Uh, World War II, um, like if you hit within two miles, it was a good shot. Yeah, <laughs> especially a university so like crazy. Berlin where they have so much anti-air, anti you know? You know, like, just like let a bomb go and just pray that it hits what you, or yeah, hits what you want to hit. I mean, you're, you're aiming, but you're in an airplane thousands of feet up. Yeah. That's why so many buildings were just completely demolished. But he say like 90% of Berlin was destroyed World War II? That's insane. Actually, only 10% of that building was destroyed, so the other 90% <laughs> yeah, like is the opposite is stats on this thing. Crazy. Aside from all the uh, Soviet-style buildings, one little stopover from the Soviet era that I think is pretty cute, in a way, is the, uh, the crosswalk man. Oh man, I love him. He's got his little arms out, and then he goes, with his arms swinging. And he has a big hat on. Yeah, and that is a Soviet style era design. And the Soviets designed that. It was part of their crosswalk system. And he said it's just one of the small one things, of things that have stuck around. Yeah, I find that really interesting and oddly cute in a way. It was one of the first things we noticed. Yeah, when we were Ash here is like, was... look at the cute little crossing guy. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. It's on all the crosswalks. Well, we're taking a break right now and I'm freezing. I don't know if you can tell that I'm shaking, but the stabilization in the lens seems to be working all right. <laughs> So we're gonna, right. we're gonna step inside and just warm up for a second and then we'll come back out here. We are back in the grind, back out into the cold, and we just saw on the corner a bit of the Berlin Wall that's still up. That is the second largest intact portion in its original position in Berlin. I don't know if we're gonna see other places, so I just wanna get a shot of that real quick and tell you a bit about that wall. 
Um, interestingly, the wall itself wasn't the deterrent for keeping people in, in East Germany and out of West Germany. It was more of the whole death strip in the middle covered with spikes and armed guards with orders of shoot to kill and barbed wire and lit up at all times. That was sort of the deterrent, you know, like the risk of immediate death as soon as you went dink with your, your foot into the, uh, the middle there. The more he talks about the history about Germany, it makes me wonder how um, much I actually paid attention in world history. <laughs> because all of it feels really new to me. I don't know yeah. like, any of the history. A lot of my history comes from movies and reading encyclopedias, so it's a bit limited. Just stop us here to point out our friend the double line of bricks over here. This is uh, that line marking the exact location of the wall. Uh, so when we cross those bricks, we cross into West Berlin for the only time on the tour if we ignore the fact we just spent our break in West Berlin. But we're going to head into the American sector, so come join me in freedom and exploitation! This way! Yay! West Berlin! <laughs> now, um, this is the world-famous Checkpoint Charlie. Let's be honest, who's never heard of Checkpoint Charlie? Be honest. Good, one honest person down the back, one honest hand. Um, I'm glad, because it's not a good place. Checkpoint Charlie was part of the Berlin Wall. It was part of what was tearing this city in half. So if you've not heard of Checkpoint Charlie, it's never in the news anymore. That has to be good news for Berlin. But also, this is fake Checkpoint Charlie, because the real one got torn down in 1990. The real one was a massive pain in the butt. There was a big guard tower here in the middle of the road, blocking traffic. Then there was all these zigzags that cars had to drive through. A big customs area down the back. All very inconvenient in a modern city. So they tore that down in 1990, but then tourists turned up in the late 1990s and asked where it was. So they bought them Disneyland Checkpoint Charlie. <laughs> but it's not a real guard hut. They are not real soldiers, they are actors. There's only one genuine bit of Checkpoint Charlie Billia here. You can see opposite me on the far corner is a big white sign that says you are entering the American sector in four languages. That sign is fake, but the frame around the sign is real. And that is the only genuine bit of Checkpoint Charlie here. So the story of Checkpoint Charlie is quite a ridiculous one, of course, centering around the Cold War era. Uh, essentially what happened is there is an American man who wanted to head over to the East and see a opera, but they wouldn't let him pass without papers. And he said, I don't need to give you papers. So he called his friend the general. They escalated the situation. Before you know it, there's um, about 20 tanks all together pointed at each other. but about 10 meters apart on either side of the checkpoint. And finally, JFK, uh, along with the Soviets, you know, de-escalated the situation and we averted World War III, but pretty interesting story. While walking around the city, we've been seeing these pipes. We were like, what the heck what are they? Why are they around? They are like bright colors, like that one is pink. We saw another one that was blue. And he said that Berlin is swamp. It's like a Slavic word for swamp and that when they do like all these building construction things, they need to suck the water out and that's what they use them for. They usually take them down after the project is done for a little, like after a little while, but there are still quite a few up because we've seen them while we've walked around. Well, apparently they leave them up as modern art installations in a, in a way. <laughs> but they're just pipes outside yeah. of the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Painted. <I don't, laughs> it's really so many major cities we've been finding are built on swamps. Yeah, it is really interesting. And also the thing is, is that like, well, that's so much work to build a city on a swamp. <laughs> Why? Why? Yeah. <laughs> Another cool thing about these tours is that there are things that you see when you walk around the city. You recognize them, like the little guy that's on the crosswalks or these pipes. Before we were on this tour, we were like, what the heck? Why are those there? Or what do they mean? Or, well, um, But we wouldn't have known unless we've been on this tour. And then he willingly gives us the answers. Like, we don't even have to ask. So it's kind of cool. Additional info for any of you out there thinking you may want to move to Berlin. Apparently, it is built to house about 8 million people. Um, but there's less than 4 million that currently live here. So I don't know what that says about the economy of the place and how much it costs to live here, but there's plenty of room for expansion if you want to live in Berlin. Comedy. Let's let's be yeah, honest. Yeah, Steve he was, was hilarious. hilarious. Yeah. 
So if you guys are in Berlin, definitely come to the free walking tour. Plus, Sandman has all these other tours you can do, like a beer one. Josh, when he heard about a beer tour, he was like, let's do it, let's do it. Hashtag not sponsored, but still we <laughs> yeah, like yeah, Sandman. Yeah, no, so. not sponsored, but we love doing Sandman's whatever city we're in. As you can see, it is getting dark outside. Josh and I did not account for winter darkness. In Barcelona, it didn't get dark until 5.36. But it's like 3 p.m. right now, and the sun is nowhere to be found. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is setting, and we have clouds. All right, we have come home. Ashley has made us a fantastic platter of cheese and apples and, and peanut butter and mustard. With pretzels. And pretzels. I got pretzel sticks. Nice. And we got our beers, kind of, I have a pomegranate beer. Uh, don't worry, I have a German Pilsner. <laughs> While on our tour, our tour guide suggested a movie called Downfall, and so Josh and I are going to try and watch that and have a relaxing evening out. It is only about 5 p.m., but it's pitch dark outside and raining. And freezing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're going to munch on our munchies and enjoy a movie together and snuggle up just like... It feels, it feels like Christmas snuggly weather. So I hope we encourage you to get out and travel today. Definitely do a tour when you arrive to a city. It's awesome. A walking tour kind of just gives you the lay of the land and some history behind the city. So wait fam, we'll see you in the next video and have a good night. Good nacht. Good, oh, that was really good. Thanks. <laughs> good nacht. <laughs> So good morning, I am Josh. And I'm Ashley. And this is our channel, The Way Away. We sold everything we had to travel the world and now we want to share with you The Way Away. So be sure to subscribe down below, hit a little like and hit that bell for your notifications so you can follow more of our adventures. Let's go check out the Berlin East Gallery. We're walking across this bridge now to head over to the East Side Gallery. Ashley was saying uh, off camera that it's kind of late. We've been waking up later and later. I don't know if it's just the way that the sun is changing or not. It gets light around 7 a.m., but we're not even up to like 9. And then we slowly get ready and finish some work and we get out of the house around 11. And then the sun goes down around 3.30 or something. So it's pretty annoying. The thing I was So anyways, but now we're headed to the East Side Gallery. We're gonna go check out the wall over here and uh, we're gonna see what it's all about. Okay, Ashley's gonna tell us all about this because she's the expert. I'm you look it up on really Wikipedia. An yeah. <laughs> so we're in East Berlin currently. We are at the East Berlin Gallery, which is a portion of the Berlin Wall, the longest standing portion of the Berlin Wall. And it's about uh, one kilometer, a little over one kilometer. And they commissioned over a hundred artists to paint on the wall. So they all have their own little portion, and we're gonna check it out. Um, it's a great place to see a lot of street art, which if you watch our videos a lot, you know that we like street art. Already liking the style. It looks a little bit angsty, but I'll take it. It's cool. summertime how busy this area would be oh yeah but it is it's pretty fun to see everybody just taking pictures walking around slowly even though it is cold outside it's almost zero degrees like freezing celsius celsius yeah, yeah. no freezing degrees zero, zero degrees degree. celsius 32 degrees fahrenheit oh yeah 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 freezing. <laughs> i was trying to remember what my um phone was in but yeah it's cold um it was supposed to snow today and i had my fingers crossed but it didn't it's supposed to snow in two days on sunday so 
As pithy as it may sound, it's really nice that something like the Berlin Wall, something that symbolized and literally divided cultures in a country, uh, something like that has been turned into a gallery to talk about politics and worldviews and just display art at the same time. I like when something like this is turned into something like it is now. It, it gives me a little bit of hope and that's, that's the stuff I appreciate about art especially is when not only does it make a statement but it's generally reflecting on the past and a hope for the future and I think that's what a lot of this art is saying. Of course, you don't know because the artist isn't here to explain it but you get your own interpretation. Technology is going down. I hate this. We, we finally got our drone back um, from Paris where we left it because we couldn't have it when we were in Morocco. And I went to go fly it to get some shots of this river and stuff. And the DJI app updated in the background while I was connected to Wi-Fi and then I launched it and it's like, please sign in and you have to have Wi-Fi to sign in. And I, and I'm out here in the middle of everywhere trying to fly it and it just bricks, it basically bricked my thing. I can't fly it unless I go back home or to Wi-Fi and sign into my DJI account. Grounded. I just, You're grounded! I'm grounded! <laughs> End of rant. <laughs> Sorry, rant over. So I'm trying to get cool shots and do cool things, but it's just like so annoying. And that's technology. That's where technology is in 2017. Also, your hands are frozen. And I'm freezing. I'm sitting here <laughs> freezing my butt off and it's like, nah. You can't fly your drone because you need to sign into your account. Ugh. And we've been carrying it everywhere. We've so been carrying we this all day. <laughs> oh well, we'll figure it out. Sorry, a little icky. Uh, you're grounded. We don't even know what it is and nothing's really open right now, but it looks so cozy. Look inside there. They have a fire going. An actual fire along the river. I bet you this is open later or yeah, maybe yeah. it's open in the summer because it seems only like half open right now. It looks like they're working on things, but they have Christmas stuff up. So you'd yeah. think that it would be open. Maybe the weekend. Uh, that could be. So maybe starting tonight and then going into the weekend. A market by the river looks cool. Yeah, we don't know what it is. We'll have to figure out what this market is. Supposedly it's called Holtz Market and it's a Christmas market. Some of these um, obviously look like they're here longer term, but it's open tonight, which is Friday, through the weekend. So I think it's only a weekend thing, he said, um, ah, and only Christmas. So, got it. Yeah. It's pretty cool looking. Maybe we'll come back. Maybe. We have the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> there is a party going on somewhere. That is crazy. What is that called? A disco ball? This is a massive disco, disco ball, ball I've ever seen on the road. I do like how <laughs> so far in Berlin, we're seeing just a bunch of really interesting eclectic stuff. Yeah, but it is a, such an interesting city. Like I think that they pride themselves on being that way, but yeah. It, like even the market we just stumbled upon, it looked super bohemian looking and there are tents everywhere, which is really cool. I don't know. And it, they have posters everywhere. It's like they embrace the poster. Some yeah. places, like some cities, they like have posted no postage, no no posters. But here, it's literally everywhere. I wonder if this is just sort of the style of East Berlin. It's a little bit yeah. bohemian, a little punky, a little grungy. A little hipstery. A little hipstery at the same time, yeah. yeah. I didn't know much about Berlin and actually somebody said in the comments that they thought that Berlin would just be like a bunch of cement buildings. Um, which is a lot of cement, but it is really cool. Like, um, the way that they've done this city is so unique. It's like you can't throw a stone in Berlin at Christmas time without hitting it to a Christmas market. We're just walking down the street. <laughs> We're wandering. We're wandering, just literally exploring. And we come across this place again in East Berlin. And it's a giant carnival and yeah. Christmas market. They got Glühwein just behind us and they have um, all kinds of foods and lots of carnival rides. That's like egg beater extreme. You know the egg beater one? Oh, but yeah. like too extreme, like so fast. Kind of makes me dizzy just watching it, my eyeball. Let's 
Kind kommt zwischen Träumen aus Mandeln und Zimt. Weihnacht, Weihnacht. That is so cool, a singing moose. <laughs> this is feeling so Christmassy. <laughs> yeah, singing moose, the hallmark of Christmas. <laughs> and the spider being jumped down and people playing games. And I think it's so fun. They have gingerbread everywhere. And churros, classic German Christmas <laughs> cuisine. A hot dog. Look. Oh yeah, bratwurst. A half a meter long. Look at this. This is big. Huge, like like this long. It's not like one of those people telling the whole fish story, you know? Like my fish was this big, my bratwurst was this big, <laughs> for real. <laughs> I'm scared. There you go. <laughs> we got a half a meter long bratwurst. Four euro. Four euro. A little pricey for what it is, but it's delightful. It's really good. And we're on our way home, so we were like, well, we should get something to eat. Four euro is not bad for this. It's been a good day. <laughs> The chef. <laughs> so we're headed home now. We just had a wander day just to see what it was like to wander around Berlin. Um, we uh, we saw some cool sights. We were accosted once. Um, we had a hot dog. We got gloves. It was great. For the winter time. Good all around. It was a <laughs> good experience of the culture here. You know. Yeah. We're liking Berlin. I mean, it, yeah, it's a very comfortable city to just oh, totally. hang out and walk around and. And, and literally everyone we've come in contact with, aside from the one bus operator, has spoken English. Yeah, so we haven't had any We've problems. been very fortunate in that way. <laughs> Everybody's really nice, except for the one guy that was mad today about the... He was literally a punk kid, I can say that. <laughs> literally a punk kid. Josh like, had an old man moment. I did, I was like, that was actually a punk kid. I was like, oh. You're like, he was, he was literally just trying to cause problems. Uh, so. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed Berlin with us today, and we, yeah, hope we encourage you to get out and travel. We'll Come to Berlin in the yeah. winter time. Just dress warmly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, hasta lo, hasta, uh, Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs>
a long day of shopping at different markets, it's time to come to some place that both of us can enjoy, and that is Pulse Markt. This is a place that we showed in a different vlog, but we didn't actually come while it was open. So, we're coming here to get something to drink, refresh ourselves, and relax a little bit before going back home and showing you guys our haul. All the markets that we've been to tonight, Holzmarkt is probably the most local. There are no metros that come here, just a bus. You have to walk from the nearest metro about 10 minutes, so it's too far for most tourists. But this place is really cool. It's got sort of a hipster, bohemian vibe. Lots of little handicrafts that you wouldn't find at other marketplaces. And it's pretty much all locals. There's fireplaces everywhere, they're shooting fire off. Um, like as kind of a theatrical effect as well. It's got a really cool chill vibe. We're gonna head now home and show you our haul. Now one of the cool things about traveling abroad and going home for Christmas is that you can bring back gifts. So Ashley went out and found a lot of gifts for her family and some friends and she ran a couple errands for her mom and uh, we're gonna show you what all we got today at our Christmas market. This is our first Christmas shopping that we got done. This is, this is so Christmas fun. shopping. And I think that we did pretty good. First off, we got some chocolate. German chocolate. German chocolate. Oh wait, this isn't the chocolate. <laughs> okay, so we got these chocolate. It's from a company called Rausch, I think. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, and we got all these flavors. I have no idea what the flavors are inside. But they have to be special because they're sort of upper tier price range. These are 75 cent euro cents. A piece. A piece. Each. They're, so everyone only gets one. You get one <laughs> chocolate and you're gonna like it. <laughs> because it's very special. They're expensive. Oh, they give us some samples. Nice. Plus, we got these chocolates that have a bunch of different chocolates in it, and we're gonna share it with our families, all yeah. try the different chocolates together. Same company, really cool. just not as special-ish, I guess. In this package, my grandfather is German. My dad's stepdad, but has been my grandpa forever. And so we got him some German sausage. Sausage? Yeah. What'd I, you call these sausages? I brought, no. What, are, what? Yeah, they're yeah, sausages. They're sausages. I think. Yeah, but they're like dried sausages. And yeah. so we got a garlic kind, a walnut kind, and then Josh really wanted like an natural. Original, yeah, Just natural kind. Meat. Mm. It smells good. Mm -hmm. So we're going to share that with our families as well, which is really fun. And, and they come on a string. Josh and I saw a little old lady buying these, and so we thought they are legit Christmas cookies. Mm -hmm. So we got these Christmas cookies to share with our families and there's like a bunch of different kinds inside. We don't exactly know what they are. Mm -hmm. They're made by a company that's called Weiss and it's called Meisterclass. So Masterclass something. They have like um, this white crunchy on one side and then the other side's kind of cookie-y. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like a wafer with stuff on it. it gives three tasters? I, that's what I was thinking. She gave us a lot of tasters. Oh, okay. I'll, I mean, I'll them. We got four samples. I think that just about does it for the food. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. The little snackaroos. This little package is a special little package. This is from my favorite store. Like, we've gone to a lot of Christmas markets, and literally this was my favorite place at in the, all of the Christmas at markets. At the Alexanderplatz Mart. Yeah. This is Glasgow Gelhaus. My mom asked me to pick up these special ornaments for some of her friends. This is a tradition that we do every year. There you go. This is a little pickle. It's a pickle ornament. And supposedly the tradition is, is that Germans on the day of Christmas will hide a little pickle on their tree. Mm -hmm. And whatever child or person f finds the pickle in the tree, which it's very camouflaged, yeah. um, they get an extra little prize or treat. But the funny thing is, is that the German girl that we're staying with right now, our roommate, she's never heard of never it. Heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> so who knows? And she's from Bavaria. <laughs> but this little pickle right here, on the tag, it says that it was hand blown, or it was blown by somebody here in Germany mm -hmm. and painted, hand painted in 
So that makes them extra special. A quick little fact about um, glass ornaments, at least in Berlin, it seems that because there was so much glass production here during war times, uh, there's a lot of glass factories and out of that grew the industry of making ornaments. They have so many cool ornaments. Like I would come here just at Christmas time to get ornaments for my tree. As you saw in our footage, there's a ton of stuff there and she really held herself back. I went every aisle. So I got these the other day when we first found that place. And this will just give you an idea of how special that ornament place is. If you are Sandy, uh, Ashley's mother, do not look. <laughs> So this is an ornament that I bought there for my mom and it's um, got a little clip on it and so you clip it on the tree. It is so special. And then my dad, I got him a special one too. A little fishing pole with a little sparkle fish on it. Gone fishing. It's so cute. They're, they're so unique and something that would be hard to find in the US. So as you can see, there is a lot to do at these Christmas markets in Germany. You can come and just enjoy an afternoon or an evening out with friends yeah. or a loved one. You can go by yourself and maybe perhaps meet some people. That could be a fun thing to do. It seems like it's just the thing to do. And as you saw that last market that we went to, especially uh, Holtz, Holtz? Holtzmarkt uh -huh. or Holtzplatz, Holtzmarkt, I think, um, that wasn't around any metros and we couldn't find any information about it online. So it definitely seems to be a unique locals thing. It, yeah, it was definitely food focused, not necessarily there like handicrafts. There were some handicrafts down, some. but it was a very small section and it was not like your typical Christmas stuff. So it was, mm -hmm. it was kind of different, it was special and fun. So WayFam, I hope we encouraged you to get out there and travel today. I would recommend coming to Berlin, especially around Christmas time, it gets really special here. Mm -hmm. So we will see you in the next video. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Good night. Good night. From Berlin. I'm Ashley, this is Josh, welcome to our channel. We sold everything we have to travel the world and now we want to share with you the way away. So be sure to subscribe down below, give us a like, and hit that little bell for more of our adventures. Let's go! So today we are headed off to what's called Museum Island here in Berlin. And we're going to a Christmas market! We have a lot of fun things planned today. Some classic things that Ashley's been wanting to do here in Berlin. I cannot wait. Germany's supposed to have the best Christmas markets ever. We had such a good breakfast. I had chai, a chai latte made with actual chai tea. Mm -hmm. um, fun fact about me, I do not like chai lattes made out of powder. Right. <laughs> and a lot of places do that. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure when Museum Island became called that or when it was founded or whatnot, but behind me I have the Spree Canal. It's a small body of water, a canal, off of the Spree River, which is on the other side of Museum Island. It splits it up. It's a very small island, probably like half a kilometer long or so based on my judgment of looking at a map. And all along it are museums, universities, there's a garden as well as a cathedral. I think we're going to go take a look around. On 
the northwestern side of the island alone, there is the Altiz Museum, or the Old Museum, built in 1830. The Nusis Museum, finished in 1859, which was destroyed in World War II and reopened in 2009. The Altiz National Gallery, completed in 1876. Pergamon Museum, built in 1930. And the Bode Museum, and that's just this side. On the southeastern side, there's another museum or two, plus residential places, plus places to eat, plus some other construction going on. This place is huge, and that's not even including this guy, the Berlin Cathedral. So we are in the museum quarter and we met up with our friend Phil, who we met Hi. on Instagram. He is on vacation from Australia, and we thought we'd just meet up, and somehow he found us. <laughs> On this island, so that we told him where we'd be. How yeah. small it is, Roughly. kind of is, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so he's gonna hang out with us just for a little bit. All right. As we're walking around, we're looking at all the prices of the different museums to let you guys know how much it is. It seems on average they're all about seven to eight euro, but we did just see something that we think <laughs> translates to museum pass, like all the museums, because then you can buy one ticket for each museum. It's about 18 euro for what we believe is the ticket that gets you to all the museums on the island. Actually, if you plan to go to all of them, that's a good deal. But if you're just going to one, you know, save your money and just go to that one. I bought the one that takes you all the way out to the outer edge as well, so that's yeah. why it's dirty. Okay, okay. <laughs> so we're talking to our friend Phil here, and here on a vacation, he bought the Berlin card, um, and it has this whole booklet that shows the different things that you can get percentages off, as well as it's good for transportation. For three days, it's about 27 euro, and you get all transportation, which for us, it's like 280 each time we use the metro each. Um, so 20 euro for three days is an amazing price and a great deal, and we totally should have done this. Phil's on top of it. Yeah, <laughs> and you can add in this museum pass we just talked about. Yeah, for yeah. like an extra 15 euro, I think, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Guys, whenever you're going to a city, definitely look into these cards that they have available because when you add everything up, they usually end up being a great deal for you. Christmas market, we decided to check out some chocolate. Delicious! Ashley's. <laughs> Josh is like, Ashley, are you going in there just to look at us? Look at chocolate? We'll see. <laughs> you say thank you for not touching, but they say nothing about licking. Your tongue is an appendage <laughs> of your body. <laughs> Where we at we're at yesterday in our footage and this is a chocolate size one and it even has the that's really statue detailed on top. that's impressive it's really cool she's going crazy you guys stop her <laughs> like the television tower oh whoa i didn't even see this Crazy. i could have backed into it i would have had no idea oh my gosh that would have been horrific <laughs> and we just have to eat it <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, that is something you want to lick. <laughs> you can't help it. It's an actual chocolate volcano that is bubbling. Ah, we should have had this at our wedding. We had chocolate fountains, but a chocolate volcano would have been awesome. 
<laughs> We're at Gendeman Markt. This is what I've been waiting all day for to go to a Christmas market. We got tickets. This is the only Christmas market that I could find in Berlin that makes you pay before you go in, but it's only one euro, so I'm sure it'll be worth it. And this exact time is when I wanted to come when it's dusk and all the little twinkle lights are starting to come on. To clarify, it's about 4 p.m. That's when yeah. dusk is at the yeah. moment. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> market in the middle like they've used plastic to build these little restaurants in here and then the, the other ones are kind of like traditional wooden market houses but this one has a bench and then these cozy blankets on the benches and they have like a little fire on the TV it looks so cozy and romantic if it was snowing outside it'd just be perfect so I was reading that in markets like this, if you wanted to get mulled wine or their version of mulled wine, they will give you a mug. And they have these traditional mugs, they can make them every year, but they're traditional to the market you're in or the city you're in. And when you pay for your mulled wine, you put in a deposit for the cup, and you can pay for the cup after you drink it, or you can bring it back and get your deposit back. But that's pretty cool, and the person that I was reading about in the blog, he said that he like told himself he was going to come home with two, and he came home with five. What? <laughs> I don't have room for five, but maybe one. <laughs> Josh is saying no. market there's also an indoor section here full of lots of goods to buy but it seems that most of the food is out here so we're gonna head out and each pick our respective meals come on in here huh and your food too uh, there, I'm kinda little. you're kind of you're kind of <laughs> short hold on it does look really Christmassy though it does look Christmassy <laughs> we can see her now okay I have gotten the Bismarck Wolchen um, which I'm probably saying wrong, but it is a herring sandwich. Hold on, is this gonna... I feel like he got really adventurous. And... Uh. I feel like when you're hungry you shouldn't be so adventurous, but you when, went for it. When at a Christmas market in Berlin, get the raw herring with, <laughs> with pickles and onion sandwich. But it was pretty cheap, right? How much it did you It was 350 euro. 350 euro is cheaper than what I spent on my traditional spätzle. Which I love. <laughs> and he'll probably have some but I they asked me what I wanted in it and I said everything so they put actual truffle they used um, and the, shredded you it you saw the mushroom in it yes. whoa yeah actual ones and then um, the spätzle is like um, dough that's it's been dough. that's been boiled it's like flash boiled it's hard flash boiled cooked yeah so they almost like this is kind of what it looks it's like it's a noodly thing yeah but it's hot, they put, she asked if I wanted the more offensive cheese or the milder cheese, and I said both. So that's what I got, and it looks great. Now, this cost about 15 euro, but it's because um, I have to bring the bowl back. Okay, and they give okay. me five euro back. Okay. Still pretty pricey. 10 euro for, for pasta. But the amount that you're getting, and fair enough. I got shredded actual truffle. It looks so good. I'll give her that much. Okay, so how does this taste? Let me let me get a bite of my herring and pickle here. I'm gonna mix mine all around. This looks delicious. Mm. Does it taste real fishy? No, it doesn't taste very fishy at all. It's a good, delicious flavor. In fact, the pickle is stronger than the uh, oh, the fish. That's what I felt like when we were in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. How's your spetzel? I haven't had it yet, but I mixed it all around. I got the onions, the cheese, and it's steamy. It's so good. Mm, very truffly. <laughs> can you translate for me? Very truffly, she said. <laughs> I can smell a truffle, so. Mm, the cheese is really good. Translation, please. The cheese is really good. 
This was a really good choice. I think it just spit everywhere. You did, but it's okay. <laughs> this, this is not a fancy vlog. Anyways, delicious food. And what did you get? Ooh, that looks so nice. Swing it down, swing it down. What'd you get? I got wow. pumpkin, mango, and sweet potato soup. What? Pumpkin, mango, and sweet potato? With pumpkin oil. Uh huh. And a little bit of uh, greenery for decoration. That sounds wow. amazing. How much was it? Uh, five fifty. Wow, that's a great price. Yeah. But as, as with the blue vine, there is a deposit for the bowl. Yeah. <laughs> Mine too, yeah. <laughs> It seems that deposits are all the rage here, which is great because you get real dishware. You can take the dish home if you want, or... <laughs> Hence the deposit. You get it back. Okay, I asked the girls when I brought my bowl back for my five euro how to say delicious in German, and they said it's Zellekum. So, that's how you say delicious. It's kind of easy to remember, I feel like. I probably won't remember by tomorrow. But they were really impressed with how I said it the first time. Then this is for you and this is for you. Are you paying together or separately? Yes, together. Then that is um, 13 euro please. All right, Ashley and I have stopped to get some blue wine and it's mulled wine. She offered me a shot of amaretto to place in it and I thought, amaretto and wine? Yeah, that sounds good. It feels so nice to have something warm on the hands and yeah, the amaretto makes it. It gives it a little extra sweetness. It's such a fun thing to walk around this market and uh, enjoy a nice hot cup of wine. And show the cute cup that you can take home if you want. So it is a three year deposit with the mug, but again, if you bring it back, you get your three euro back. If not, you keep a cute mug from a Christmas market that you went to in Germany and had mulled wine in. Not a bad souvenir, really. Can't wait to take mine home and drink on Christmas Day out hey, of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody got room for that. That's not going in your bag, is it? You got yeah, no room. I can do it. Uh -huh. It's left to right and then I'll reach it all the way up, pressing into the So after being outside for so long, a great way to warm up is to exercise at home. And I, we were freezing, so I've been doing some yoga and Ashley's been curled up like a cat. That's been our experience. That was a fun day. Yeah, I had really like a lot of fun. Phil, I wasn't expecting to come hang out with us for the day, but that was awesome. Like. I just thought we would meet and that yeah. was it, but no, he spent the whole day with us. Yeah, it was really cool and he's an awesome guy, so it was really fun to meet with Wei Fam around the world. He's yeah. from Australia and he, I guess he comes to Europe like once a year on his vacation time. And it's so funny, all the things, like he stayed in the same Airbnb that we stayed in. in because we talked about Warsaw, it in our video. Poland, and then in um, when he was in Tallinn, he also went to a restaurant that we went to in yeah. Tallinn because of our recommendation. So it's very cool to see um, when we do new recommendations such as Airbnb and stuff, people listen and actually- And then we actually get to meet that person and they're real. Yeah, you know? it's so cool. It was such yeah. a fun day. And the Christmas market was beautiful. It was a little pricier um, yeah. than but it was, it, but it was not the pricier upscale. than I expected. Yeah, I, I expected one. it to be pricey. But yeah, we have more Christmas markets to come. I loved my spretzla and my mulled wine and my little mug that I'm gonna keep, uh, that I actually snuck away. She, where, it's over there. Yeah, but. <laughs> she, she got away with one. So I have a mug, I'm gonna take it home and I'm gonna have such a good time during Christmas sipping my tea out of it. So Wei fam, I hope we encouraged you to get out there and travel today. Come to Berlin during Christmas time, feel the yeah. cold weather, get some mulled wine, go to Christmas markets. And if you have the time and the desire, definitely go to those museums on Museum Island again you can get a three-day Berlin pass for about 30 to 40 euro. That includes transportation, includes museums, mm -hmm. and all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, we didn't do that this time, but um, after hearing him and the deal he got, we're we like, were like, man, we should have done that. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Um, good Nacht. Good Nacht, auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Uh, probably not the right version of goodbye, but anyways, goodbye. Scheiße. Why would you try and swear at the end? <laughs> How did that come out of your mouth? Because it's funny, but I always say it wrong, so it's not She bad. can't even swear right. I do it on purpose.